So, welcome to the session. It's quarter two, so I think we can get going. Um, no ops, the new DevOps. Uh, we on, so on stage today, we have uh, myself, I'm Kieran Sandbrook-Smith, I'm Chief Commercial Officer for Platform. We also have Scott Hooker, who's lead engineer for Tez Global, a UK-based global company. And we have Wyn Jewett, who's the founder of Oxbow Labs, a Drupal agency in the US. Uh, actually, one of our first agencies to take up platforms. We're very pleased to have him here. What is it? It's like five, four and a half, five years on. And you're still with us, and you've, you've got a ton of sites on platform. Um, so we're going to hear from Scott and Wynn about how they adopted platform and just how they're using it and what all the benefits and productivity have been and how extremely pleased they are with platform. <laughs> um, but first, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about competitive advantage. So what is... Competitive advantage. Well, it's all about getting your edge out there quicker. And if you're an agency, that means delivering projects quicker and faster and better. And if you're a retailer or a brand, it means projecting an easier, more interesting way to buy your product or service so that you stand apart from your competitors. And um, for the majority of people in this room, I suspect our impact on competitive advantage sits somewhere in the end-to-end -end process between the developer and the live service. Uh, and that tends to include, these days, quite a lot of complex process work in the middle. Managing environments uh, and infrastructure, managing deployments, managing scaling, and all those things, most of which require quite a lot of DevOps expertise. So, what can we do about all that complex process? Well, we can improve it, but process improvement means less work, but more work. So let me explain that. Let me illustrate that point by simplifying what we all do every day into three types of work. Planned work, changes, and unplanned work. Um, so planned work is a project or a set of requirements that we agree on and we then bill for a client. Uh, and the changes come once the client's seen the project or decides to modify it. You know, that could be phase two. Um, and then the unplanned work is all the unforeseen stuff that, and, on, on all the problems that happen along the way. Uh, and if your processes aren't very good, then the more planned work you do, the more unplanned work comes back at you. And it's a kind of snowball effect. Um, so process improvement is all about doing the plan work more efficiently uh, and to a higher quality so that you see um, a lot less unplanned work coming back at you. And if you can get that right, then you're cutting the effort at both ends. And my point here is that this is a difficult thing to achieve and it can take a lot of effort to achieve it. So, should our focus be on doing DevOps better? Well, um, there's a lot of tools and experts and reading material out there that's all aimed at improving DevOps and, and the many different tasks that, that make up infrastructure management. Um, and achieving high performance in this area requires a lot of people, time, effort, cost, culture change, uh, extensive tooling, etc., etc. And in the container world, well, there's entire frameworks devoted to this. Kubernetes, for example, that you, you can spend many man years and millions of dollars building out to improve DevOps and infrastructure management and live service resilience. So why bother with DevOps at all? That's the big question. Why bother with all that when you can get no ops out of the box? Um, imagine that, DevOps and all the infrastructure management completely automated, gone forever. And all that's left is the developer, the code, and the live service. So 
So that's, this is the future of platform. This is what platform is doing and will continue to do. Our background's highly relevant here. Um, we built the Drupal commerce distribution and we delivered hundreds of e-commerce implementations all around the world. Uh, and the path that our CTO conceived uh, while we were delivering all these projects basically fixed some recurring problems that we saw throughout pretty much all of those project deliveries. <coughs> when we started the past project, it was always based around the concept of abstraction, high level abstraction, starting with the application and going down rather than the infrastructure and going up. Uh, and the intention was always to allow you to to run very complex hosting infrastructures, but without needing to know about all the nuts and bolts that made them work. Um, and this is where platform will continue to head. We firmly believe that our industry shouldn't be forcing our customers to become cloud expert, experts. Um, our customers need to concentrate on their business and implement new ideas and fight off their competition and stay ahead of the market and all those things that they need to do. And we just shouldn't be expecting them to become cloud experts on top of all that. Um, and we believe the ideas that they can turn into code should just run, should be that straightforward. So are we an idea to cloud application platform? Well, I think we, we probably are heading in that direction. We're already helping development teams move with, move with speed and confidence um, through our rapid cloning. When they need to, they can branch hundreds of times a day to test with certainty and, and then continuously deliver uh, and deploy. And we're already giving our clients the choice to mix and match many different services and stacks to create the best possible solutions. Uh, and in order to, to give you end-to-end -end control out of the box, we're extending our CI, CD capabilities so that you can run all your testing um, directly on platform. And that's all your unit testing and integration testing, security and compliance and so on. And we will also become a CDN, allowing you to put your code as close to the clients as possible. So these are some of the exciting things in our roadmap. Um, so on that note, I'm going to hand over to Scott. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So I think this presentation starts with this English speakers. So um, I'm hoping that there's no kind of Americanisms in my presentation that will confuse you all, or Englishisms, should I say. Uh, so let me start with an introduction. So I work for a company called Tez, um, with a formerly known as the Times Educational Supplement. We're about 120 years old. Um, so obviously, back then, we didn't have the internet. It was just a, a magazine that was published. Um, but now, we're an international organization um, that deals mainly with uh, education. Um, in terms of tech, when I started at Tez, we were a massive .NET stack, which um, would make anyone gasp in horror. Um, and we embarked on this massive digital transformation um, to a series of Node.js microservices, um, which is kind of not really my area. I'm, I'm not a Node.js guy, I'm a Drupal guy, which is why I'm here. Um, and for content management, we, uh, we decided on Drupal, um, which is why they brought me in. Uh, and one of the initial problems we had was uh, whenever we would make a deployment, the site would go down for about 20 minutes, which isn't great, definitely not great. Um, so I was tasked with kind of identifying and reviewing uh, different cloud providers. Um, the first thing I looked at was, okay, wow, I have all of these different applications, um, and they're all going to need Nginx, Redis, um, Solar, you name it, all manner of different services. And kind of the man hours that would be expended on building all those is quite a lot, right? And it's something I didn't want to have to maintain myself. Um, I don't really like to care about infrastructure and uh, infrastructure. It's not what I'm good at. I'm good at writing code. I'm good at building modules. I like to contribute to open source. And if all my time is taken up in DevOps, you know, I can't really do that. So, um, kind of evaluating the different uh, 
sasses and passes out there. Um, we kind of settled on platform and hopefully over the course of the next few slides you'll kind of understand why and kind of look at, um, I guess, how no ops is a thing, but also if you like to get involved with your business logic, you can have some ops with no ops. Um, so I guess a, a good place to start is we all use Drupal because we get good free things out the box, right? We get user login systems. No one really wants to have to write that again. Uh, content revisions and all that kind of stuff. We get it for free. Um, we're all hosting these same kind of sites, so why should each individual here care about Nginx, Memcache, and all, all the kind of things I mentioned? Um, why would we build our own info when all of these cloud services are out there? Cloud for the win, I guess. Um, so not only did we need a place to host our sites, we needed a, uh, a pass that would enable us to have our own workflow. As I said, we had Node.js and a lot of different microservices, but we needed to mix that with Drupal. So um, Platform SH lets you have deploy hooks. Um, so here's kind of a really good example of our development workflow for one of our sites. Um, this was actually quite an interesting project. Uh, we were tasked with building uh, free sites on the same code base, and this was all on Drupal 8. And one of the things we wanted was um, to have the deploy hook decide which installation profile to install when we push the code up. So platform lets you have um, kind of environment variables. So if you look up, up there, it says uh, CMS development rebuild. Uh, it's true. So on any of our staging branches, um, it runs uh, the first block of code. And then if it's, if it's the live database, it runs the rest. And that's something that you couldn't really do with other uh, platform as a service providers, I guess. Um, where am I? Um, so, with kind of a large team and lots of sites, um, onboarding was quite a challenge. So, if you had a new developer start, I would probably spend maybe like three to four days onboarding them, talking them through uh, like how you deploy to live. Um, and that's like three to four days of my time, three to four days of their time. So what, you're talking like two, really two weeks of developer. <laughs> they hated it. Um, they hated the response time. They hated the downtime. They hated the, just the entire infrastructure. So I come along and I go, let's go to platform. And I showed them how quick and how simple it is to deploy a site without having to write any specifics that are required. Um, they like the fact that you can have the multiple branches, so they had their project managers who are very disorganized, ask them very last minute, um, oh yeah, we want to see this bit of functionality. So, you know, up you push your code to GitHub, GitHub will then push to platform, and uh, voila, on, the, on platform you can show your project manager the, uh, the branch working, and then it would increase the process of deploying the site because they had a very tight schedule that came out of nowhere. Um, and yeah, they look. I think they're looking at moving everything away from Aquary, aren't they? Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> well. Okay, thanks, Alex. Um, I have to say that anything you've heard at today's session is not necessarily the formal views of the platform management team. <laughs> but anyway, um, yes, we have a question, John. Yeah, okay, that's a good one, yeah. So our T-shirt has just arrived. There's a ton of T-shirts. Yes, okay, all right, great. So thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Hugely appreciated.